Sir John Thompson, Ms. Susan Smith, Mr. Lao Xing Hong, distinguished guests from afar and here, colleagues and students of Dingnan University. Welcome to the documentary premiere screening and post screening talk. The documentary has a very poetic and philosophical title. Music Beyond Sound, in American, American's world of Guqin, in Chinese, Xi Sheng, Yiga Mei Wu Qin Ren Da Jin Jie. I believe that the Chinese title come from the Chinese Taoist thinker, Lao Zi's famous saying, Da Yin Xi Sheng, which means that the greatest music has the faintest notes. As you may notice or discover in the documentary, Gu Qing tunes are famous for their musical subtlety that requires the audience undistracted attention and appreciation. In Chinese cultural history, the skills and knowledge about Gu Qing have been regarded as quintessential in the training of Chinese literati. In today's context, I also like to interpret Da Yin, all great music, as a metaphor for the most important theme for humanity, and that is the willingness to achieve mutual understanding. In Chinese, we have a saying about two people or two parties who understand each other deeply. That is Zhiyin, literally meaning understanding the tones. This saying has a direct cultural reference to a famous story about a famous Guqin artist, Bo Ya, and his best listener, Zi Qi. Zi Qi is said to be able to conjure up images of Mount Tai and running rivers when he listened to Boya's playing of tunes themed after mountains and rivers, respectively. Today, we gave at Lingnan University at the foot of Castle Peak to appreciate the doc documentary made by veteran Hong Kong director, Mr. Lao Xing Hong about Mr. John Thompson's world of Gucci. I understand that both of them came a long way from their seaside residences to the mountainous areas of Lingnan University. Maybe hear it, <laughs> not very mountainous. And I'm very much tempted to say that this event may be a great example of Gao Shan Liu Shui, Hui Zhi Yi, a cross-cultural encounter for mutual understanding, just like mountain and waters meeting each other. I hope that our audience shares my sentiments and thoughts and enjoy both the documentary by Dr. Lau and the live Wu Qing performance by Mr. Thompson. Thank you all.
Shanxi Bifu, who are familiar with the Yale play, common phrases. But um, this version from Shanxi Bifu 1425 uh, is quite different from uh, the one played today. One thing will play here that has been sent to outer space. Oh, uh, do, I, do I need to repeat what I said? Yeah, yeah. one more time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to play uh, Liu Shui from Shanxi Mipu, uh, 1425. It's the earliest surviving version. Um, today, uh, the piece is quite commonly played um, in a version from the 19th century called the Teacher of Lung Shui, the one with uh, that's a lot of these. A lot of these which describe the uh, flowing water. It said that it said that um, that piece was developed in Sichuan and it shows the grandeur of the, of the flowing water. That whereas this version I'm playing is maybe from in Central China. It's a little bit not quite as wild <laughs> as that, um, but. Uh, actually in the film for about 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds. But um, when you were I, when you were coming into this, they were playing it in the background. So anyway. Um, That's fine.
Now it has to go go through the amplifier. I think uh, actually, <laughs> in a small small uh, area, with uh, without a microphone, with the I think now the, the you think echo. you think I should do it again without the microphone? <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to play another piece, right? Yeah. Uh, but I think the echo may be a little, a little bit too, uh, too long. Uh, about, uh, I'll try it back to my phone. Okay, I think you have to see it closer. Yeah, let's try and see. How about, uh, yeah, turn, oh, yeah, turn that off. I'll play for about 15 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Playing it. 
is um, the way it's usually played today is like this. Why 
Any order? Okay, let, let, let me start. Uh, first of all, let me uh, admit that the remark I made earlier at the beginning to welcome John, that was prepared by my colleagues. I just read it out, right? Uh, first time for me to meet John, and after seeing the, what do you call the movie, what the documentary, right? And uh, listening to the comments, I must say, I'm truly impressed. And I want to share with you several thoughts. First of all, there's a Chinese saying, Ta San Zhi Shi, because it's not Chinese. But actually, from what I understand, actually in terms of understanding Gu Qi, not just the techniques, but also how they related. And the Chinese music at that time related to Western music, maybe at different times or at the same time. Few Chinese would know about that aspect. So this Ta San a piece of rock from a mountain, is not just about improving yourself. Actually, raises, it raises understanding about of yourself to a different dimension because you never had that extra dimension without knowledge about the Western music. So that's my first thought. Second, in Chinese also, we have this thing called Li Shi Qiu Zhi Ye. When you have lost it, of course Li is just ritual, but I think it applies to many things. When the techniques, the understanding is lost in your own country, surprise, surprise, sometimes you could find it in other country, well preserved. Now, probably not in this case, but recently on Douyin or whatever other thing, I heard this saying: "Gao shou zai ming jian." You know, the real masters are among the common people. They're hidden among the common people, so they may not be very visible, but they are truly masters. So I think in that regard, I say. Uh, John is a real master. And third, I was actually looking up reference to Damo. Damo. Damo Zhu Shi. Hey, I was just looking figure out whether Damo as we, has this legendary figure in Chinese martial arts. Is it the same Damo as in Zen Buddhism? Well, at least according to what I found on Baidu. Same person, same person. Same monk who came from southern India to China and started Chinese martial arts. So at least people regard as him as the founding, you know, original founder of Chinese martial arts, associated with Shaolin Temple. Or we even use a Damo Zhu Shi, our ancestor, 
master, right? so it's founding master. And so, you know, some of the people who bring bring great things to China, it you think public in China itself, they have brought to China by other people, but well established in China. The Zen is a school of Buddhism that talk about instantaneous inspiration rather than very elaborate process of studying, studying, and trying to get the enlightenment. It's just instantaneous. You just got it, right? And so I say, Damo, not necessarily the only person, but I think in this case, he was able to do things that the Chinese musician could not have done, or they could did not do. And I'll say, I, I, so, Tamo is, is what you want to remember. Things that are foreign, but actually well established in China. I think China should have that ability. And Buddhism today is no longer found in a strong way in India. It's a minority, very minority religion, but in China. It's why they accepted and spread to Japan, South Korea, you know, other parts of, 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 of Asia. The fourth one I like to say is that, that John is totally dedicated. Several decades of pursuit with Wu Qing. You may say, isn't that boring? Is that worth the time? But yes, he's so dedicated, right? Never ask that question. Is it worth it? 45 years, <laughs> so I, this, I, I, I say seven decades, that's not an estimate, sorry, 45 years. But he has something, perhaps, not all Chinese musicians who study Gu Qing is capable of doing. And that is the something that I'll say might be inherently, you know, kind of uh, inherent in Western civilization, Western culture but not so much in Chinese culture. And that's a bit to think critically. Now, um, now, he analyzed, he tried to recover the old Gu Qing, they call that new say, whatever, the Qing Pu. Temperature. Now, Chinese have done that, but he did even more. And I think he did something that perhaps the Chinese musician will find difficult, even if they repeated what he did. Because they did not, they did not have, have knowledge of the Western music. So therefore, they might be confined, constrained by their own traditional thinking and not thinking of the box. Because he's not confined, but he's not confined to the you know, what do you call that term? Staff notation. Hmm? Staff notation. Staff notation. And so he could go beyond it because he knew there's something else that exists elsewhere, even not necessarily in the traditional, official Chinese teaching. But he went beyond it. So I think imagination, imagination. So to him, all these classical Gu Qing Pu, became a, is a, is a, a rich mind to be developed, to be mined, to be understood. And that is something that if you're only Chinese, no, only, you're not able to do as well, right? You could have done it, but you might not do as well. Because you don't have the first thing I mentioned, this extra dimension. You need to know something else to understand yourself better. To understand yourself better, you need to look outside yourself. And I think I'm so happy to see John has done that for us, Chinese. Thank you very much. I'm not a musician. I know nothing about music. But that's Thank all you. I said. Thank you very much. And I, and I think I've never heard a more substantive, more detailed response to any lecture by our president. So this really is a testimony testimony to the success of your performance, and your lifelong pursuit, and also Mr. Liu's dedication in producing this documentary. It's just as much a, a labor of love.
extending over 10 years. So it is quite extraordinary. So this extraordinary length of the documentary, I think is fully justified by its content and also by the spirit in which you do it. We learn a lot. There's a lot we can take uh, from, the, from, the, uh, from this lecture, but I think the precious time and I want to ask questions so that John can get further enlighten us. So, you know, in reconstructing the temperature, I think there's, there must be, you have to add a lot of elements, like uh, the land, and I think probably there's no record of how, how, how long it would take to, uh, to complete the composition, I, I guess. You know, I'm very much here. Ignorant about it, but uh, this is my guess. So, what kind of uh, you know, element you created, a creative element you, 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 in your reconstruction, and and then how you do it, and how, do you try to limit your creativity, or you use it moderately and to conform the overall, uh, the overall your overall interpretation of the composition. If I made it clear? Yeah, yeah. Now, this, the simple answer to that, which is maybe not totally un honest, is that if I'm doing it correctly, then I'm reconstructing music from 500 years ago, which maybe has not been heard for 500 years ago. If I'm doing it, if I'm doing it wrong, I'm doing something new and creative. So it's a win-win. Okay. <laughs> and I know where you win. <laughs> I I can't say that I, I I can say that I spend a lot of time trying to be accurate as I can understand it. But the only way to really discuss that or argue that is for other people to do it independently, and then we get together and. Why did I choose this rhythm? Why did you choose that rhythm? And should I be putting this up here? Yeah. Uh, why did I? Why did I choose this? And and then uh, if this went on for a while, then maybe we can say yes, this is the correct way. Uh, about the rhythm, uh, there's a general argument that there are two general arguments. One says there is no rhythm in this music because it's not written there, and the reason it's not written, the rhythm is not written. Is it? It's up to you. My teacher said, "It's up to you what the rhythm is." At the same time, if I didn't play it exactly the way he did, he would criticize. So, my understanding is, you learn a piece traditionally by copying your teacher, and then one, once you can play the way he plays, uh, then you're free to change. And I think that's true of many oral traditions. Uh, I, to what extent that's true of Qin, it's hard to say. That's my imagination of how it was, and it's and it's a. I'm sure it's much more complicated than that because it was not a. Pro I'm I'm looking at this say from an Indian perspective, where it's a very professional tradition, and you have to follow your teacher slavishly until you get to a certain level, and then and then you can change, and maybe even then you're not supposed to. Uh, whereas Qin was very much an amateur tradition, and people would study with teachers, but I think there are many people who would maybe study a bit, and then they were all scholars, they passed the exams, they get a job somewhere else, and then they were on, on their own, maybe learning from Chinpu, something like this. We don't really know that much about that. So, so and anyway, get to rhythm, some people say that because it's not ryth written, there's no ryth rhythm written, it's because it's, it's you, you interpret it, you're free, you're free to interpret it any way you want. Uh, uh, Others say, no, it's very strict rhythm. You have to follow a very strict rhythm. It's got a pulse. Maybe not a meter, but a pulse. And um, so my interpretation has always been a combination the way of those. Is that when I'm doing my reconstruction, I look for structure in there. I see in the mode, mu musical mode, uh, structures which remind me of, of, of early Western music, actually. Uh, for example, most of the music is either a doso or a la mi mode. Doso uh, is like C major in a way, except it's pentatonic. La mi is like A minor, except it's pentatonic. Uh, and almost all of the mu music has a tonal center and a secondary tonal center, a fifth of that. This is something that's very familiar. 
So um, maybe partly based on that, I justify um, what I do is I, I make the music quite rhythmic. And then once I feel that I've got that structure, then I feel I can freely play it. So it'll, it'll be, it's fundamentally structured and freely interpreted. Uh, and I haven't seen anybody really write about how they, I've, I've written something on my website about this, but uh, I, I haven't, and I'm not totally familiar with the Chinese literature on this, but I haven't found anything, and nobody's told me of other people saying something like this in terms of how do they do the rhythm. Usually it's something like, oh, this, is piece, this piece is about uh, the Oshui, it's flowing streams, so I make it look, flow, flow like this. Whereas um, I, I fundamentally spend my time looking for structure. Once I find structure, then I try to see how it might fit in with the, the theme. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. And how about Mr. Liu, would you like to say something? Oh, yeah. okay. Maybe. Any new perspective on your own uh, documentary? And, uh, after this uh, occasion, probably how would you uh, write it differently? <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, I, 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 referring back to uh, uh, Principal Chang's uh, about the uh, Indian holy monk uh, Dhammo from India, you know, uh, uh, in Buddhism, they, they believe in uh, reincarnation. So uh, actually, you know, that reminds me, you know, John, maybe in his former life, maybe a Chinese Kuchin uh, <laughs> master. Otherwise, uh, how, how could a Westerner be so interested in, uh, you know, spend f so many years in uh, studying and uh, playing Chinese team? Okay. Now, secondly, uh, I think uh, on, on behalf of uh, we, on behalf of John and Shizhen as well, we must express our deepest Thanks to uh, you know, uh, Principal Chang, Professor Shai, and uh, the whole faculty of uh, Nanyang for uh, inviting our documentary here, and also uh, John playing to such a uh, those small but must be enthusiastic crowd <laughs> of uh, uh, student teachers and uh, visitors, and. Um, now, uh, if you really like uh, our film and also appreciate the, I think the very important uh, as both uh, Professor Chai and uh, Principal Chang uh, mentioned the uh, important uh, contribution, uh, achievement of John, uh, please do tell everyone you know about our film. And uh, I think very important, uh, uh, the spread of the mouth it's very important if you write about it online and uh, tell your friends, then maybe eventually that may arouse the interest of uh, the Hong Kong uh, 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 distributors of, of uh, cinema, you know? Maybe they will show our film in the cinema uh, so that more, uh, a lot more people can see our film. Otherwise, they will just think, oh, this is, uh, there's no commercial market. Uh, it will be boring and uh, nobody will want to watch it, you know. So your help to spread uh, the news is very important. Okay. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, Ling Nam. Thank you. <laughs>
uh, devotion to the instrument and the contribution you made. Um, does this question ever occur to you, like self-cultivation? Uh, that's what I'm interested in. Self-cultivation. Yes. So does, does it actually occur to you that this is important? Like, or, or it's just because the music is beautiful? So that's kind of the question. And also about the, the Tao, you know, the literati society and the self-cultivation is always about connecting with the, the Tao. So I'm wondering what's your interpretation on the, on the Tao? You know, as a modern person uh, from Western culture interpreting the Chinese music. Yeah, so. Um, I've read, I've, I've read uh, about Taoism, I've read in, in Taoism. Uh, I like things like uh, Ming Ke Ming, Fei Chang Ming, if it can be within the words. It's not the real truth, and that's one reason why I like music so much. Oh, okay. So it's not. Um, it's so, not, but yeah. I. So I can't. I can't really. I can't really say. Yes, Taoism affects the music this way. I can't really say. Uh, I've consciously tried to self-cultivate this way. I. But 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 while playing, I read about this, and I think maybe indirectly it has some kind of effect. Mm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Or maybe you're just very humble, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. That's, uh, thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. Yeah. Please uh, thank you very much. And I actually have uh, one question for Mr. Lau and one question for Mr. Thompson. So, um, Two half questions. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So uh, for Mr. Lau, uh, I, I see that time you uh, interviewed before uh, Mr. Thompson for over 10 years. And uh, so just wonder what uh, really time, you think it's a time for you to uh, put things together and then make a complete or uh, finished product. So why do you think you know, now is the time for you to uh, uh, to make this documentary. So I just wonder if I made myself clear. So I think, you know, uh, it's a long process, right? Yeah, and uh, yeah. why yeah, now? Very often documentaries are a long process. Yeah, so why do you think it's time? <laughs> oh, okay, I see. So why do you think it's time for you to put it together and to make, it, make a finished product? Yeah. Okay, and then. Um, How why much now? now? Why not five years later? Yeah. Why not five years earlier? Why is this time? Uh, okay. okay, can you hear me? Do I need a microphone? Oh, okay. You have it. Okay. Uh, actually, in the beginning, uh, I was just uh, recording. Uh, I, I, I did have a, uh, well, you know, I was in a, really in a commercial uh, film industry, in a drama, not really in documentary. Uh, but, uh, <clears throat> Uh, in the beginning, I was just uh, taking some uh, films, you know, some shots of uh, uh, John Strait. Since since he helped me to uh, to make my uh, first feature film, the, the music for my first feature film. So in the beginning, I was not thinking of doing a feature documentary. So usually, that that, is a, that doesn't have a big market, commercial market. Uh, but then, as time goes on, I, I see the the contribution. And the dedication of John to Chinese culture, I, you know, uh, it's not <coughs> not recognized by too many people. Not too many people know about it. Although John is quite quite famous in uh, in the Guqin circle in China, uh, but to the ordinary people and also to Hong Kong people, actually John has contributed a lot to the, as you can see from the documentary. His work uh, in the Asian Art Festival, and also his uh, dedication and hard work in, uh, in uh, studying uh, and, and playing Gu uh, Not really, uh, to, if, he, if he was uh, uh, doing something to the French government, uh, the French government would probably uh, give her uh, uh, you know, the uh, uh, John. <laughs> okay. My, uh, okay, I, I think we really need to be recognized, also in uh, America. Uh, but now there's uh, so much hostility. You know? I think uh, 
in this kind of conflict, I think we even need more friendship and understanding between different people. You know, it's very important. And since uh, uh, Principal Chen, uh, you have very good connection with uh, Kathleen, yeah? and also uh, <laughs> Professor Chai from Princeton, I hope you can uh, recommend to them, you know, they show our documentary, invite uh, uh, John to speak up more U.S. and Chinese friendship. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> very good point. <laughs> Music knows, uh, knows no borders. <laughs> right. I think also, uh, in, in the documentary, it was mentioned that uh, John together uh, lived in Hong Kong for over two decades. So he's a Hong Konger. Yeah, he's yeah. one of us, yeah. right? He, he's a permanent resident. I am a permanent resident. He is a permanent resident. He is a home in Shantou. Yeah, <laughs> right. So I think this is something maybe we should bring to the attention of the Hong Kong government. Yeah, I think you can uh, listen to the John in Shantou. Uh, right, right. <laughs> he's one of us, and uh, he's making profound deep contribution. Right. And this is music. Is, is something that uh, is a human uh, language that knows order. And I think friendship and all that comes along. At the end of the documentary, you mentioned that uh, John reaching out to poetry and other sister art of Qin music. Right. And right. then I should mention here, he will stay overnight and, and <laughs> Tomorrow, I will film a special episode, video episode uh, for our How to Read Chinese Poetry episode. So this is the word to spread and to send the message that there's no geographical boundary, definitely not geopolitical boundary between culture. In culture, bind us together. And, and people working, you know, to study another culture, they can make a contribution to, the, to another culture. And this is a, a touching story. And how uh, someone distant uh, from Chinese culture physically, but can actually revive a rich cultural tradition, almost entirely by on its own. So I really like the word of detachment uh, in the movie. And that is uh, my own academic path. But, but of course, my attachment is intentional, it's not natural. So I left China, studied in the Western world, and then learned the Western language and culture, philosophy, and thing. Then the reason is just not to study another culture, but to better understand my own culture, to see the difference. I don't think that I can ever have done what I've done without being distant from the Chinese culture. So that's why I urge all the young students, I mean, the, to really spend time studying English, to really have a solid mastery of the English language and culture, and so that you will have a unique perspective for all your own research. Yeah. So I think, particularly, you come all the way to Hong Kong to, to do, then what distinguish from Hong Kong? from the other university in mainland China. It's the English being used as the means of instruction. Yeah. So this is... I totally agree with uh, Professor Chai. You know, I myself, I also study uh, film making, uh, film production in, in uh, the USA. And when I came back, I, I made a Chinese film, <laughs> a Chinese documentary on, on uh, uh, Chinese culture. And then I also, try to develop a film theory based on uh, classical Chinese poetry. And uh, Yi Jing, I have uh, developed on the uh, film theory of Yi Jing. You know. So it's uh, going to the West, learning something uh, from the West, and then coming back to look at my own culture, and I have deeper understanding. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, and thank you very much and for, uh, for coming. Uh, to this event. And, uh, I also would like to take a picture. Good photo. Oh, yeah, let's take a good group oh, photo picture. Yeah, yeah. everybody uh, come to the. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, come to the front, come to the front, please, so we can take a good uh, picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How many people? This way or that way? We all stand here, okay, I think because... You can only sit it, you can only sit it. Sit it? Sit it? Yeah. Oh, okay. We will take a picture from there. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. I think it's the wrong, uh, wrong yes. instruction, okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry, I think it's the wrong instruction. The young man over there. He's so tall, Mr. Man. Please stay in the central area. Let's make a photo. Uh, staff members, you you can sit in the front. <laughs> you have the front seat privilege. Let's switch. Thank you very much for coming. Okay. See you next time on the next occasion. Okay.